In this video, we're gonna go through 1500 photos in 15 minutes. I'm not gonna edit them, but I'm, I'm gonna work my way through a photo shoot that's got a lot of photos in it. And my goal is to get it down, get it down to a manageable amount of photos that I can look through and edit and start having fun. Cause it's hard to have fun when you've got 1500 photos. My name is Matt Kluskowski. Welcome to the latest video. Um, so I gotta give a little backstory here. This is a wildlife photo shoot, but the techniques you're gonna see could work for a landscape or a travel photo shoot as well. So don't think it's just wildlife. Last week, I got to go on an Eagle photo tour. I live in Tampa, Florida, about two hours north of me. There's a gentleman that runs these tours. I'll put the link in the description. His name's Dick. He's not just a tour guide. He's an amazing photographer. He knows the eagles, the patterns, the lake, the winds, the sun, the light, all this stuff, and how to keep a safe distance so you're respectful of the wildlife as well. And he makes etched glasses. So he made my uh, my logo on a glass here. I'm gonna put that to the side so I don't get tempted to keep reaching for it. So anyway, so I liked it so much. It's a four hour, uh, four hour tour, I liked it so much I went back the next day, which is why I have 2000, almost 2000. I said 1500 in 15 minutes. It sounds better than 2000 in 15 minutes here. So keep in mind, it's 15 minutes ish. I'm gonna try to give you a, a, a quick recap version because it'll get very repetitive if I, if I do the same thing over and over again. So I'm gonna try to give you how, how I got through this and I'm narrating it. So imagine if you're just doing it yourself and you're not talking, it would actually happen very, 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 very quickly. You'd get through them a lot faster. And that's the point. You wanna start having fun with it, okay? So let's jump over into Lightroom. I'll share my screen with you here. So a couple of things help make this happen. The first thing is we're in the library module. When you do your import, when you import into Lightroom Classic, you wanna make sure you choose embedded and sidecar under file handling. Okay, you wanna make sure you choose that option. That will allow you, while you're in the library module, that will allow you to double click a photo, hit the right arrow key, and you can, you can start looking through these. It's like a video, right? You can start looking through these photos super, super fast. You don't wanna do it in the develop module because the develop module has to build a preview and that's where a lot of people go wrong. That's why they think Lightroom's slow. Um, Lightroom should not be slow for you by this point. This is, this is a, five plus year old computer. Um, my laptop's even slower and it's still, I get the same response from this. If, if Lightroom is slow for you, Adobe has handled this and there's, there's just a couple things you have to know, but you're doing something wrong if Lightroom is still really slow for you, okay? So that's the big thing. Library module is where you wanna be and you wanna make sure when you import, you do embedded in sidecar and know you cannot go back to previous imports and do that, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. The first thing is, is we, we wanna get, we wanna come to grips with a couple of keyboard shortcuts. The big one is gonna be X for reject, all right? We wanna reject photos. And I can look at a group of photos and tell the bird is, I, this was the beginning of the shoot. I'm seeing these eagles flying above. I can tell it's just too small in the frame. It's not gonna be what I want. So I start up here I shift click all the way down to maybe here and I hit X for reject. They are now all rejected, all right? Doesn't mean they're gone, doesn't delete them. I could delete them if I go up here to the photo menu and I go down to delete rejected photos, but we don't have to go there yet. Um, everybody's got different views on whether or not they wanna delete or don't delete. Um, for me, I, just, I wanna just get through them so I can get to the fun stuff. And it's hard to have fun with 1500 photos, although, I'm not gonna tell you I don't do a little bit of editing at this point, and you're gonna see what I mean by that. Now, we get to this next grouping over here. I did a lot, you're wondering, how do you have 2,000 photos? I did a lot of photographing before, during, and after the action, and part of that is, you know, you see an eagle in the tree or in the air, we start shooting, because you never know, another one's gonna fly by, there could be an osprey that catches a fish and the eagle goes after it. There could be eagles protecting, you know, one eagle's in a tree and another one comes by and it chases it away. So if I see one, if we saw one in a tree, we would stop and start shooting, hoping something happened, but it didn't. Now, it's not a bad portrait photo of an eagle. So I can press the letter R, takes me into the develop module and it takes me straight to crop mode. That's what R does. So I can press the letter R press it again, and I can check sharpness. Now I can say, okay, well, I got a good sharp photo. 
I can see the resolution up here. And what I'm gonna do is you can press the letter I to cycle through that information. I usually keep it off, but I keep it on during this process because I do wanna check the resolution if it's worth it for me to even keep it at this point, okay? Now, when I've done a little bit of editing, I do wanna save myself some time because I'm not disciplined enough to just go through and not do editing. You know, I'll play around with some of the sliders. Um, it's fun, but I do want, I wanna make it so, hey, I liked this photo at some point, so let me save it. And what I do is we're gonna go over to, let's go back into the library module. We're gonna go over to our collections panel. I'm gonna make myself a collection called Eagle Tour, okay? I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna set it as a target collection. I'll talk about that in a second. I'll hit create. I set it as a target collection. You'll know it's a target collection because it's got a plus on it. If you right click on another collection, you can then set that as a target collection. You can only have one at a time, all right? It's got a little plus on it. Well, on, I'm on this photo. If I go photo, add to target collection, or just press the letter B, which is what I'll do, that will put that photo into the target collection. And in fact, what I do is I don't wanna go through at this point and decide which the best one is. So I just select all of them, press the letter B, they all go into the target collection. Now at least I know some favorites are inside of there. I'm actually, I'm actually not just deleting, but I'm doing a little bit of work of, of saving some favorites, all right? And I'm not really after selects at this point, but you inevitably will come across a select and you'll wanna do something with it, okay? Next, I can look over here and I can just tell these are no good. Uh, you might not be able to see it. I can tell that the eagle's flying away from me. So select all those, hit delete. Now, this is one where we started photographing in the tree and eventually he took off. So pretty cool stuff. I think he kind of dive bombs. Yeah, look at that. So now again, I want to check sharpness, press the letter R. crop in a little bit and yeah, we got, we got sharpness. I don't need, I might even want a little bit more of the tree in there, but yeah, plenty of sharpness, 3,200 pixels. I could share it online and I could still get a decent sized print from it if I wanted to. All right, so press the letter G, go back and now I'll click here. Remember, I'm not after finding the best one. I wanna narrow it down to tell myself later on, let me go through here and spend a little bit more time, but I'll press the letter B to drop all of those into the collection. All right, so this is where the sooner you go through the photo shoot, and this is why it works for anything, wildlife, landscapes, travel. The sooner you go through the photo shoot, the easier it is because you'll remember. And I know I've got, a, I've got a few close to full frame shots of the eagles. So when I see all of these non full frame shots. When I see this, I just go through guys and they're gone. They're gone. There's no reason for me to keep them. So we'll go back up to where it started and I'll shift click, hit the letter X and now they are all gone. All right. Now we come down here. Um, little side note here. I'll go and click. So we, we do have, I did have one that's kind of full frame directly overhead. I'll go into develop and maybe check the shadows so I can work with that a little bit. But um, really quick, so these are with either my Sony A9, my Sony A7R4, um, or my 200 to 600 millimeter lens, which I love that lens, it was so helpful here. And also my 600 prime, okay? So that was the, uh, that was the gear that was used. But back over here, about hit the letter G, and again, I don't know which one I wanna keep, but I know there's a few in here that I might like, so I'll hit the letter B, and they'll drop into the quick, quick collection. And then I'll go over here, Nothing happening down to there. Hit the letter, not B, sorry, sorry. Undo, Commander Control Z, undo. Uh, hit the letter X for reject. Those go away. Now we got the eagle coming in. You can see he's coming in for a catch. All right, so at that point, I know this grouping is something I'll want to inspect later. So I'll go ahead and select it. Uh, I'll go right up maybe until this point here and hit the letter B. Now, I did keep shooting and I kept, you know, there's probably another 100 frames after this one that I'm just gonna go through and get rid of all of them. Um, and after I do this, I'm really gonna start speeding through a lot of this. But there's another 100 frames through there. And the reason why we do that 
is because you want to keep shooting after the catch. Number one, the Eagles look down, which is a really cool shot to have. Um, and then the other thing is you never know if another bird's going to come by and try to take it. So this was that was a juvenile. An adult often comes by and tries to take it from it. You know, ospreys will catch something, the eagle will come by and, you know, pecking order, the eagle comes by and tries to take it. So that's why we keep shooting. And that's why it's so important to delete it because they're just, you don't need them. They're failed attempts. I don't even want to say failed. I didn't do anything wrong but nothing happened. You, we did the right thing by shooting, but there's no reason to keep that stuff because it didn't amount to what we wanted it to. But that's essentially the process here. And it's just repetitive. It's me going through and it's doing the same thing over and over again. What I can tell you is that as I get deeper into the shoot, you know, I'm gonna find one where I know, here's a great example. As I get deeper into the shoot, I'm gonna find a, a shot like this, great light, great sky, great early morning light. And it's, you know, it's taken with my A7R4, which when I press R for the crop tool, I can go in here and check. I mean, look at that, almost 5,000 pixels, tack sharp, plenty of detail to work with here. Um, that becomes my new standard. If I don't have anything better than this from this point on, I'm not keeping it. There's no reason to keep it, right? This is beautiful and that becomes the new standard. And that's one of the things that's hard to do, but if you can, if you can convince yourself and force yourself to start to do that, um, you, you end up making it a lot easier to look at your photos later on. So uh, real quick, I, I, got a, uh, I got a fun little, fun little one on, on this one. So I like a little bit of both. I like clear skies. I like some with so a little bit of clouds in the background too. It just makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, but I want to show you something really cool that I did with that photo. So I'll share my screen and I'll go over here. I did it in Photoshop. Um, what I did, I used sky replacement. So I click on the layer, go to edit, go down here to sky replacement. You are going to see a little info card pop up on the video. I've got a full sky replacement video. So before you ask me a sky replacement question, please go watch that video. I guarantee you it will answer every question you have. Okay. Um, but I did a sky replacement, which it puts it into a little folder. Okay. And then I click on that. Now clouds would never be this clear, right? But I go over here to filter blur Gaussian blur, and I can hit it with hundred, 150 pixel Gaussian blur. And I can blur those clouds, 600 millimeters, um, F 6.3, they would be be soft and blurry and that's that's how they would look so none of your skies in the sky replacement filter doesn't have that option um so that's a quick way if you wanted to do it for something like this photoshop it's not just landscapes it works for a lot of other photos as well um, i'm also going to put a link uh, i'm going to put a link into the description so i have a free sky replacement pack if you want to check out so uh, you can download it totally free. There's also one with a few, a, a lot more skies in it if you want to check that out as well. But again, I'll put the link in the description. All right, so let's finish this up. So you got the process, all right? You, you get the overall process here. And again, I would go through this grouping here and probably hit the letter B, drop those into our target collection. So our process has been, we're either rejecting it or we are doing nothing with it or we're putting it into the target collection. So once you're done, once you hit the end of your folder, what you can do is you go down here to your little filter bar, right? And sometimes it gets hidden. Sometimes it gets shuffled over. You got to click the word filter to make sure you see everything. There is three pick flags, three flags over here. Okay. So pick unflagged, or reject, that's how. That's the order of them. So if I wanted to see all my rejects, I could just click that and I'd see all my rejected photos. Um, there'd really be you know, no reason to do it because if I want to delete all my rejected photos, I just go photo, delete, rejected photos. But what I can also do is I can see my unflagged photos. So when you, imagine when you hit the end of this, this process of your folder, you're either gonna have rejected photos, okay, where you pressed X, or you're gonna, the rest of them are gonna be unflagged. So what I could do now is click the unflagged filter, and that's gonna show me all of my unflagged photos. Now, this is, again, I didn't go through the whole photo shoot. If you went through, there's hopefully many, many less here. But what you do is 
you shift click to select all of them and then you can just drag them right over into your collection. Okay, now that collection contains all the photos that you want from this photo shoot. You may still have work to do, but if you follow what I was talking about earlier on, if you follow, follow that process, that you have much less work to do, okay? Now you can start having fun. There might still be 200 photos in there and maybe you wanna try to get it down to 20 or 30, but now you can start having a little bit of fun. You can start going through the really good ones. You can start doing some quick edits to them and then really going through and finding those photos. And the other thing that you can do is if you go into that collection, so right now, let me go click on my Eagle collection. What I would do is if I wanna get rid of photos, all I have to do is just select them and hit delete. It doesn't delete them from the disc, it just deletes them from the collection. So now you can really start to pare your collection down more and more by deleting from that, that main collection. And now, you know, as you go through those photos, you'll have less and less photos in the collection until you're done where that collection is just gonna be a grouping of your selects, of your favorite photos from that photo shoot. Okay, so I hope that helped out. There's a, a lot of concepts in there um, and there's a lot of tips in there, but I think if you can, we, we're all guilty of it. I can't tell you, I do this religiously as much as I should, but eventually I sit down and I have to do it because my folders get so big uh, my, that I, you know, it's just too many photos to go through. So I hope that helped you out. Uh, again, I'll put the links in the description if you wanna download that free sky pack as well as a link to uh, the tour that I went on there. Say hi to Dick if you do go on a tour with me. He's a great guy, great photographer. And uh, I, had a, I had a blast and, and just, you know, got photos that I just was so many great shots that um, it was, uh, it, it's hard to go through and actually pick my favorites from. So thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.